Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about the After Update event and how to automatically update fields when another field is updated. Before we get started today, a couple prerequisites for you. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this. About 20 minutes long, it'll teach you everything you need to know. Can you use an after update event with a macro instead of VBA? Yeah, you can, but why? VBA is so much better, it's easy to use. Go watch this, trust me. Do this instead of macros, okay? All right, go watch this. And then when you're done with that, go watch my if then video. Most of the time when you're doing an, an after update event, you wanna say, if the field I just changed is this, then do that, set the other field something else. You'll see the example in just a minute, but it'll, it'll be helpful if you know how an if-then statement works before watching the rest of this video. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Okay, there are a couple of different kinds of after-update statements. The most popular by far is a field-level after-update event. In other words, when some field is changed, take the value, look at it, and say, okay, I want to change this other field. For example... Let's say I've got uh, an order form here and I've got an is paid checkbox. It indicates whether or not this has been paid. You might want to know on what date that order was paid. So you can see if it was late, you know, how long it's been paid, that, that kind of stuff, right? But you don't want to have to type it in manually, okay? You can if you want to, but this is where an after update event comes in handy. Because as soon as you click on that is paid checkbox, you can tell Access, hey, if I just mark this paid, set the paid date equal to today's date. And if not, if I uncheck it, make it blank. All right. You can still change it if you want to. That's another beauty of the after update event is you can change a field, but still let the user modify it. Like if you're processing payments today for checks that came in last week, so you can still change it yourself. But at least after update takes some of the work for you. Okay, so let's add a paid date to our order table. Okay, so I'm going to go to the order table, design view, and we'll just add a paid date in here. That'll be a date time field, and we'll leave it blank by default, so it's normally null. And then when an order is marked paid, we'll set it. So let's go into here, right-click, design view. All right, now I'm just going to move some stuff that we don't need out of the way. I'm going to take this notes field, slide it down here. I'll take this invoice button, move it down here just for the class, all right? So here, let's take order date. I'm going to copy, paste, control C, control V. I'll slide that over here. All right, we'll change the label, paid date, right? And we'll make this field now bound to the paid date field. So go to all, change the control source to paid date. And while we're at it, copy and paste. We'll make the name paid date as well, right? The name and the control source. The control source is what field in the table this field is bound to, this control, this text box, right, is bound to the pay date in the table. Okay, so save it, control S, close that down, open it back up again. Now, I can type in any old date I want in here, or I can just pick this and, you know, put a date in. But what I want to happen is when the user clicks on is paid, the after update event fills today's date in there for us. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, let's go to design view, click on the checkbox there go to the events and find after update after update when this value is updated i want something to happen what's going to happen well let's find out hit the dot 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 the builder button there if it asks you what builder you want pick the code builder and our code builder pops up our vba window we're right down here is paid after update whatever we put in here is going to happen after that checkbox is updated so right now, just to see what happens, type in message box, hi there, just to see, all right? Save it, control S, come back over here. Let's close this. Let's open it back up again and click on the box. Boop. Hi there, see? That's all that is, that's an event, right? When this guy is updated, say hi there. Okay, simple enough, but I don't just want that. I wanna say, okay, if the is paid checkbox is now true, then set the date. So I'm going to say if is paid. Now you can say equals true, but equals true is assumed. So you don't have to put that. So if is paid, then we're going to say paid date equals today's date, just like that. 
And I'm in the habit of putting the open and close parentheses because technically date's a function. It returns a value. But access always gets rid of them. But I'm in the habit of typing those in anyway. So it uh, goes back to my old C programming days. Okay. Otherwise, else paid date equals null. In other words, if I uncheck that box, blank the paid date. It's not paid anymore. Right? Okay. Let's save that. Control S. Come back over here. I'm going to close my form and reopen it. And ready? Here we go. Click. And there's my paid date. Today's date. And it is October 11th, 2022. Uncheck it, and it goes away. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now you can do all kinds of stuff with after update. After update is by far the most versatile of the functions. I use it constantly. I cover it in tons and tons of my classes. Here's another video I cover after update and dlookup. If you know dlookup, you can look up a value from a table or query, right? So when a field is changed, you can dlookup something like what's the customer code, who's your sales rep. That kind of stuff. And if you really want to learn all there is to know about after update, in addition to a lot of other stuff like more with the if then else command and lots of statements, procedures, parameters, all kinds of stuff, my access developer level one class, that's the best place to start if you want to get serious about programming in VBA for Microsoft Access. Right now I've got 41 different levels, each about an hour long. And so if you, no better place to learn access programming. Now, in addition to field level after update events, there are also form level after update events that will fire when the entire form is updated. So you can use it to check multiple fields. I cover that in developer one as well. And there's something called a before update event. Before update happens before the after update and you can cancel it. So you can say, hey, if this field isn't right, then we can cancel the event. There's all kinds of stuff going on. But I don't want to blow your mind with too much information all at once. So that is your fast tip for today. Lots more coming. And I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, Plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me. And you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. Access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject. And one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. 
Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.